to you from the all-new Live House in Hollywood, California. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Pensado's Place. In a second, you'll meet our guest, a Grammy-nominated veteran of the Atlanta scene. Lots of information you'll learn from him. But first, uh, I want to tell you about a new sweepstakes coming up from our friends at IK Multimedia. We'll let you know about that. That'll start in a couple of weeks. As always, please sign up for our newsletter. Like, subscribe, and click notify right there. And DP, what is this week's ITL? I want to share with you guys a, a vocal echo throw that I did recently, and I really liked it. Check it out. Today we're going to try and do a world record quick into the lair. And uh, so pay attention, it's going to move fast. This is my friend a Andy Stochansky, uh, former drummer for Andy DeFranco. Talented, talented guy. I really like his work. Been doing some work for him. And uh, I'm going to show you an echo throw that I did on one of his songs. Check it out. Beats and camouflage, I pretend to blow it off. Why do I still want the sound? I think that's so cool. Let me solo it for you. And let me show it to you. This is Echo Sun by Overloud. This is the actual delay that. Uh, you know, a plug-in version, of course, that Pink Floyd used on a lot of their, their hits. Uh, almost all the British acts f uh, in the 60s and 70s had this, this exact uh, piece of gear on their, on their songs. It's, it's a different kind of technology. It's a steel recording drum of some sort. And uh, it was a bit unreliable. So this one works. Uh, it's by Overloud, like I said, Echo Sun. And let's listen. Why do I still want the sound? And you go, well, that's not special, day, but listen one more time in the mix. That's what's so beautiful about this thing. It was really, really, really not what you would call a hi-fi sound, but watch how it sits in the mix. Why do I still want the sound? And there you go. I don't know if we broke the record, but we, we uh, at least we learned something. We'll see you next time. Our guest has multiple Grammy nominations from Kanye to Kendrick, plenty of gold and platinum to his name, and a very interesting background. Please welcome to the desk, D. Brown. How are you? Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. What's up, dude? How you doing, my man? <laughs> oh my God, you did it to me. You suck, dude. <laughs> well, what, what you guys don't know is we tried to get them not to do that. I went show. for a handshake. He saw that. Yeah, he, Dave went black. He went formal. No, that's 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 like that's universal. That's universal. Yeah. But I did go in with but that. He, but not for this table. I led. I led. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> that would be. We were doing it to the partially that. because. That as a military kid who decided in Montana to go DJ a little bit to go into audio. Mm -hmm. Probably you guys didn't learn cool handshakes back then. <laughs> no. I would imagine. <laughs> I know how to march straight. That's what I know how to do. <laughs> Grammy nominations, um, lots of work with YG, uh, a graduate of the Patchwork Atlanta system, which is, has its mm -hmm. own ecosystem. It's been an amazing ride, right? Since so you came far. out of yeah. since you came out you came out of school in two thousand seven. Two thousand seven, like right at the end. So kind of and started at Patchwork in two thousand eight, right at the beginning. Uh, the, the thing about Patchwork that I find interesting, which is a studio in Atlanta, for people who don't know, is that it, it created a whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You could literally even get projects financed there, yeah. and then the label services and so on and so forth. Was did that teach you more as as an engineer and your engineering skills and and being you know, being aware of the process that goes beyond just mixing and, and having some sense of that? or um, A lot of those things came as the business shifted. Like those things, those tactics started getting adapted to the model when, when I was there. So mm -hmm. I would say, yes, they helped me learn, but it was more everybody's adapting to the changes in the business. In the business overall. So I think that's really what a lot of those, you know, things came about. What was the Atlanta imprinting on your signature style, if you have a signature style, on your mixing style? Um, I would, the, the sound, the heavy knocking sound, but um, really just the speed and timing, being quick in the, in the game is really what Atlanta taught me. Mm. Like, 
we're fast in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. We kind of have to be, but yeah, I feel like because of because of Leslie Brathwaite. Because of Leslie, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, because I think with the uh, the style of write, like people go in the booth and freestyle now, so they're not taking the time to write. Mm-hmm. So you have to be as quick as their head. What's in their head, you need to be you that gotta, fast. You got to get right. it while they're giving it. What, right. do you, what do you miss most about tracking and what do you miss the least? Uh, the least about tracking is just the crowd of people. It started to become a big show, and that's sometimes not that much fun. I like being in the moment with the artist and just having that little personal time mm-hmm. to you know, really bring out what we need to get. But mm-hmm. um, crowded, and, crowded control rooms yeah, are not fun. Yeah, not when you're tracking. Because right. like, I think people forget that that's the the inception of everything. So we want that birth to be as clean and nice as possible. So mm-hmm. people are distracting and talk. I might not be getting the best thing out of there that day or whatever, you know, just those little things. Um, what I love about it though, is I, like I said, I like being there at the birth of everything that mm-hmm. we're there at the creation. And uh-huh. that is nothing cooler than that. Like in, in your Atlanta days, who were some of the artists that you worked with? Um, Man, everybody. Really? <laughs> yeah, it really. Anybody I could get in the session with, I didn't turn down anything back then. Um, so I had uh, Waka, Jeezy, Gucci. I've had some Cash Money sessions. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, the list goes on and on. Mostly hip hop? Mostly hip hop, yeah. Okay. R&B. Um, I've had Monica and Fantasia. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you do some Faith Evans stuff? I've done some Faith Evans. Well, I did Fantasia for Faith Evans. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, Kelly Price, mm. Um, mm-hmm. she's really nice lady. <laughs> yeah, Kelly is yeah. nice lady. And competition, does that keep you on your toes? Is it, um, do I you kinda, pay much attention to it or not? Yeah, I, I kind of take the, the Leslie model on that one, and we're not really competing with anybody. What's mm-hmm. for me is for me, and what's for you is for you type mm-hmm. thing. So I, I, I don't stress So more stress of a support it. system? Exactly. I'm, I'm here to help everybody. Like, oh, you know, cool. I mean, help what you can. and. Because, like I said, what's for me is for me, and you can't take that. Right. <laughs> like, right. So um, helping other people, you know, get better, come up, or do whatever, you know, that, mm-hmm. that's... How does your military background play into your engineering skills? Um, I, I think it helps with my, my structure and my discipline as far as getting things done in a session. Um, I, I don't... I know how to utilize my time a little bit more, and I don't mess around with mm-hmm. things that aren't necessary, I guess, so. And you can choose different tactics if you need to kill somebody. Exactly. <laughs> right. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make, yeah. Makes it easier. And I don't mind being yelled at, like, that That doesn't phase me anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we've been yelled at in the military so many times that it's one of them, like, okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's your favorite artist that yelled at you? Uh, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I haven't been yelled at just yet. Because <laughs> they know about your military yeah, background. Because they know about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> on the YG side, you also dabble in live sound, correct? correct? Mm-hmm. So, is there something about that because you did those records that helps him as an artist? And also, do you That's take great question. from the live side that helps with your mixes or whatever you do? Does it work both ways? Um. It kind of works both ways, but I think more for me, it was, I just wanted some extra pressure and make live sound is all pressure. All pressure. <laughs> 100%. And so it was kind of one of those things I just, I, I like to press my, push myself with goals or tasks. Mm-hmm. And that was one that um, when I was in Patchwork, uh, the owner, Mike Wilson, he had a, a festival and he had a couple of his engineers do live sound for him. Mm-hmm. And that's how I got into it. So it was kind of like, let me see if I can, you know, use my skills. Mm-hmm. Knowing YG's music makes it easier for me to get into the live sound because sure. I'm not, I know what's going on. I know what's coming. Sure. I, you know, and I you guys it. trust each other. Exactly. So you, it makes it a little easier. Were you easier. playing your own stems? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that made it easier. Exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a real nice DJ and vocals and you just call it a day. <laughs> Did you ever DJ? Yes, I did DJ. That's how I actually got my start. That um, was the Montana thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was in the military, um, I I basically uh, found one of my one of the, another military guy. He was uh, had his own setup, turntables, and all that. And I asked him, "It's like I want to learn what you do, so please show me." Uh-huh. And yeah, every day that I wasn't in, in on base or doing something out in the field, then I was in his basement practicing on turntables, mm-hmm. beat counting records, doing whatever I could. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, I think within. Three months I was doing, we were having our own shows, like our own little events and stuff. So, hmm. yeah. The self-taught part, mm-hmm. you you know, you went to school, you you researched schools, mm-hmm. you went to school, you actually, I think you went to Full Sail. Yes. Um, so education is important, but I also think based on the conversation we had before the show started, you self 
teach yourself all mm -hmm. the time. Of course. Right? Like you're, yeah. you're studying a lot of stuff in post now. Right. right? You're, you're never not learning in this business. Mm -hmm. Like right. we're always, and I think that's what separates the great engineers and all of those things is because those guys are always learning new stuff. Mm -hmm. It's never stops. So yeah, I teach myself as much as I can things I want to learn. Mm -hmm. I, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I just don't go grab everything, but yeah. So, um, I'm trying to get into post-production just because I wanted another little avenue um, for some revenue and things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. um, I've been teaching myself uh, Avid, what is it, the Media Composer mm -hmm. and uh, Premium Pro mm -hmm. um, just on some, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like, you you know, you can never be good enough, so. On the Grammy-nominated stuff, was it tracking or mixing or? Uh, tracking mostly. Oh, is that right? Uh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, was Kanye Life of Pablo? Uh, Life of Pablo, that was Kelly Price. We mm -hmm. did, um, she came in and did, uh, I think it was Ultrasound or mm -hmm. High, High, High Life. Mm -hmm. but, and then yeah. Kendrick as well. And then Kendrick, um, I worked with the, the producers, the business, and back in, in the beginning, they broke up recently. But um, so we recorded the beat for Shireen. Got it. Yeah. Got um, it. That song, we literally went around the studio and I grabbed anything that made a noise and <laughs> recorded. I recorded paper clips, staple guns, <laughs> flat basketballs, mm. <laughs> you name it. If it made a sound, I recorded it that day. And mm. that's what they made that beat out of. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And you mix that? <laughs> yeah. And then we put all that together and that's the, the charade beat. So oh, very yeah, cool. It's a flat basketball kick sound. That's awesome. <laughs> I, have go, I have to go back and let's take YG's Go Loco. Okay. Go, go from start to finish. You're, you're tracking that first. Mm -hmm. Give us the process. How does it, how does it work? Um, that was, we did that at Chalice actually. Um, it was... Tyga YG and session that day. So um, yeah, typically it's Mike in the uh, Mike in the booth. But that day, Tyga likes having his mic in the control room. So Dr. Dre saw. Yeah, they. I mean, the hook got made, and then verses get done. Are you working on the console or in the box? Um, in the box as much as I can. If I have time and space and energy, and then I can, and I'll use the console. Okay. But it, for most purposes, we're in the box now because we need to be quick and travel around. Like I need to be able to pull up a session at any point, right. anywhere. And you're in a console, you can't do that. So that that tracking session is that all day? Is it three or four um, hours? Is it? It's an all day thing, but yeah, it's only a couple of hours of actual, of actual track. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's other stuff that goes exactly, on. Exactly, that's what I was like. Right. How, how, how did Atlanta become Atlanta? Because I left Atlanta about 25 years, well, 28 years ago, yeah. and um, it was just starting to get a little little movement. L.A. Mm -hmm. Reid and Babyface were there, and yep. Cameo was there, and it was just starting to pick up a little bit. Then n next thing, I turn around and like. 15 years ago, it's like a whole different place. Yeah, exactly. What happened? Was it Coach K? Was he part of it? Or was it, I, that, I think it was those the, seeds by L.A. and Babyface? Yeah, I think it was the seeds by L.A. and Babyface, but I think the or, the organization of Atlanta kind of got together. You had the Ludacris and T.I.s, and you had some really big names come up in Atlanta and kind of give it that face. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it was just floodgates. <laughs> it was like everybody wanted to be there. You know, it was... Um, it was new energy. I think it's new energy, new uh -huh. blood, you know, new excitement. Boy Wonder told Herb and I that the reason a lot of Toronto talent leaves Toronto is because there's no way to get signed in Toronto. Right. Did that happen there as part of that? I think that too. Like you don't have any major labels out there. So everybody's, you know, kind of figuring it out. And then that's when like Coach K came in and was like, yeah. okay, I'm gonna show you how to go here and go there. And, you know, he, and mm -hmm. then, you know, you, of course you have Leslie there who's mixing incredible yeah. records. So it's just, and our boy you know, Miles. and boy miles. Exactly. So people, you know, you want to come, you want to start coming. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm so happy for that. Um, and then, so now that you made the move, what are the differences between the Atlanta scene and being in L.A.? Uh, L.A. is way more spread out. Mm -hmm. A lot more studios, different. Like, I, I think since I've been out here, I've done more songwriters than I've ever done, period. Mm -hmm. Like and, that and avocado toast. And an avocado toast, the healthy eating out here. <laughs> <laughs> Morning people. <laughs> it's like, it's weird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, but I, I think just the, the size of L.A. is what makes it different from from uh, Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it, it's the, the grind and the work is still the same. Right, absolutely. 
So you've now tracked, mm -hmm. right? You're going to get the mixing job as well? Yeah, I generally do all of the vocals for him. Um, sometimes I'll get beats, but most of the time the producers kind of have, because it's mustard, most of his beats are mustard, and mm -hmm. mustard has his engineer, mm -hmm. David, and they do their thing. So mm -hmm. I just kind of marry my vocals to their their beats or they two tracks. They send you a two-track already mixed? Most of the time it's two tracks. They'll do me. They'll give me stems, but if I'm tracking, I just stay with the two, the, the two track. I don't really use stems to record. And um, what is the magic to mixing a YG vocal? Um, clean. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like a lot of delays and effects, so the the mental tricks of getting a thicker sounding vocal without making him think it's a thicker sounding vocal, mm -hmm. those kind of things. Mm -hmm. um, and then, so for some reason, I don't know what people are listening to, but a lot of times they think that it's just a lead and there's no accompanying anything like no stacks, no ins and outs, no ad libs. And so now we're working with just one lead track and trying to make that as big and grandioso as possible. Also, if if he wants to see how you're doing on the show, you're gonna have to invent a whole new set of techniques. Exactly. Yeah. You're not gonna fool him anymore. So Well, we kinda have a trust, thank God. Uh, <laughs> how, how many years have you worked together? Um I've been with him since my crazy life actually. Oh, is that and, right? uh, yeah, we started that's when we first got started. Um side note is that I assisted Ray C coming up and we actually mixed tooted and booted for YG. Mm. So I kind of been with him since the very beginning of his career mm. slightly mm -hmm. but uh yeah since my crazy life i've been with yg so that's my crazy life still brazy stay dangerous and now and he's got two singles out now right and we have two singles out stop snitching and then the go loco gotcha yep. gotcha gotcha yep. gotcha gotcha yeah. when you're amazing, so. when you're capturing his vocal mm -hmm. or anybody's vocal mm -hmm. does because you're probably doing a lot of rap vocals mm -hmm. i'm assuming yeah. mic placement become important um it does generally what I'll do is the beginning is I go into the vocal booth and I do hand claps mm -hmm. around the room and I try to find a dead space and then I'll stick mm -hmm. the microphone there. They, it's kind of hard to keep an artist in front of the microphone this day and age because mm -hmm. they're like they're walking around, they're writing, they're doing other things. So him standing in one place at the beginning of his vocal, he's not going to be standing there the next time he does it mm -hmm. or if I have to have him punch in or come back. So just having a good general uh, volume level mm -hmm. is really important so that when he does step back from the mic, I can either adjust it a little bit or go, you know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. make those minor adjustments mm -hmm. as I need be. But So you, you're riding actually potentially. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, so, I yep. bet. Yeah, yeah. What's, so what's the vocal chain? Um, personally, I like to use a U87 and M1 CL1B, and then I use a DSer, a 902 DSer online. Oh, old school. Yeah. Um, but currently, I'm using a C800 1073 CL1B and still using my 902 DSR. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Do you have a? Do you carry it with you? No, no. Most most uh, most places have the 902. Surprisingly, <laughs> I haven't run into too many places that don't have it. And and it's one of those things. It's just an extra. It's an extra catch for me. So mm. it's not a necessary part of my sound. It's just one of those things I like to have. It's just an extra step saver kind when, of thing. When rappers are writing or, or doing their vocals, are they going from their phones? Most of the time it's their phone. Yeah. And so that one I have to tell them, hold your phone up in the air. Right. That was, I was, <laughs> yeah. That's what I wanted yeah, to get exactly. to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because there's too much of this. I, if you, I, that one, I'm like, okay, if that's what you got to do to get your read it and get your timing down, that's fine. But now when you're ready time. to record it, hold your phone up for me, please. Mm -hmm. I need you up and looking at the mic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I think with with a lot of the punching in and out right now, it, I, my personal wish would be that we can do all the punching because if that's your writing style, that's your writing style, mm -hmm. and I don't. Nobody wants to stop you from getting it out. But I think going back and re-recording after you've done that is what needs to you know kind mm -hmm. of be the standard. But mm -hmm. I get a lot of times you know that's not the vibe. I, I said it better that way. So mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. what's your uh, what's your thoughts and approach to how to use social media to get your career going or higher going to higher heights um i'm learning that one unfortunately i i'm kind of stuck in between the old school world and the new school world i came in 
at a time when you didn't tell people where you were at at the studio and who well, you who were working that, with because yeah. those would get you fired because mm -hmm. that's not what the studio was about. It was supposed to be a secret. Mm -hmm. So I'm now learning how to to adjust. Transition. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, a, it's a tougher transition than it, people. It really is. Yeah, it really is. Because you want to look proper too. You don't want to just be out there like, oh, I'm an engineer and then not know what you're doing mm -hmm. or like, like I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I try to stay. And then plus your level, what's to dictate your social media at this level of being a professional versus, you know, mm -hmm. some yeah. new, new yeah. guy coming yeah. in. Mm -hmm. So how comfortable is your client with it? Mm -hmm. exactly. What do you do more of? What mm -hmm. not? You exactly. know, there's, there's lots of stuff to it. I've never asked a client ever to take a picture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like if you get a candid of us in there, great, and maybe I'll use it for us. But I, I, I would feel so weird breaking that with that a client. That would get you fired a long time ago. Exactly, and that's why I won't do it because mm -hmm. I, I feel like I'm breaking a trust with my client. Like we have an understanding. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm a fan of your music, but I'm not a fan mm -hmm. of. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I don't want to break that 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 uh, that line. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, it, yeah, it's it's interesting times. It's people. <laughs> or self-governing and you don't kind of always know how to self-govern exactly i was impressed with a, a question i heard you answer online um, um someone asked how do you treat celebrity clients differently than you know non-celebrities right. and you said and I'm, I'm gonna leave room for you to tell, tell the answer that's the best way to do it <laughs> i think i said that's why we're here. i think i think if i remember right i said that i don't treat celebrities any different than the bottom guys but i like everybody is the same in the studio mm -hmm. when it comes to that but um i i try to learn as much as i can prior to an artist coming into my session prior so that i can make them as comfortable as need be get them whatever they want I just want the best out of the artist when they come into the session. Mm -hmm. and, and the celebrities have more of that online. Exactly, and it's easier to find that information out for celebrities than it is a new a new. Yeah, guy. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll call engineers, I'll find out who you worked with before, and if I got to know, hey, you worked with so-and-so, what are they like? Mm -hmm. What, you know, mm -hmm. what are these little things? That's, Cause, that's good for your self-protection, too. Well, I, I'd hope it's, so. <laughs> it's, it's not just for their comfort, yeah. it's for your comfort as well, that too. That, too. You feel a little bit better when you're in a situation when you know everything's right. But well, that, and I also think that, um, just my opinion, <laughs> um, it can be discarded for sure, but I also think celebrities have more respect for you when you not only prepare for them, but you also make sure you're mm -hmm. in the... Because it's about... Equal, you know, it's about creating an equal playing exactly. field, and it's hard for somebody to respect somebody who just treats the other person. Right. In, that that doesn't generally get your respect. So, right. but there's a balance to it of for course. sure. Remembering their lanes, but of course. if you were to advise an upcoming aspiring, you know, engineer or somebody wanting to be an audio, what would you tell them? You know, is it education? Is it practical experience? Is it all? Give a, give us your, the D Brown recipe. Um, I would say it's, it's a little bit of all of that. I, I would school for me is foundation. Like I didn't go to, I never went to full sale going, I'm going to go to full sale and then I'm going to be the greatest engineer at, as soon as I come out of school. Mm -hmm. It was, I need a foundation of why a compressor does what a compressor does, why a reverb is a, like, I need the basics. And then when you get to your studio, that's when you start learning. That's when you learn to put it all together. Mm -hmm. So if, I think the steps, the necessary steps in being an engineer are still important. Mm -hmm. Going to school, getting an internship, being an assistant, and then, you know, working your way up. I think those are all very, very important steps because mm -hmm. it, you know, gets you to where you are. I think, I think another thing you said that, 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 that really resonated with me, that, that when you're in a, in a, in a silo with a, a nuclear missile, and all the controls, knobs, and everything, walking up to a console, that, was, that wasn't intimidating yeah. <laughs> with all the knobs. You know, everybody says, how do you know what all those knobs do? You never did that. No. <laughs> and, and you're very technical. How's, how's the technical side played into your career advancement? I think just being comfortable in a room handling any problems that arise, like if the console goes down or something short, like you know how to fix more things 
to be a little bit more prepared for the the odd stuff that happens in a session. I think that's what the technical side allows me. Well, I, you know, when a gear piece of gear goes down, you're not freaking out going, oh. Well, who particularly when you've been in a silo with a nuclear weapon, <laughs> which you described as <laughs> this 100 foot down yeah. to the first level. That's just, and then there's grates that go a certain yeah. way, and then you go below that, and there's computer stuff, mm -hmm. and... Walking in the control room is kind of boring, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. you know, like, that's, that's a whole different. It's I don't know. To me, it's kind of the same because it's like I said in the beginning, it was a secret. Nobody knew what was going on yeah, in these rooms. True. It's like that's, that's actually a good. Point. It's kind of like it's still a it's still a hidden job. So it was kind of mm -hmm. like I'm going into the secret room. Nobody's going to know what I'm doing. There's all these gears and bugs. Exactly. It's kind of the same thing. I got to make sure all this stuff works. Mm -hmm. You know. Let's uh, let's take a little time to vent right okay. now. Um, the sessions that you get can be kind of sloppy, and yes. sometimes you spend two or three hours just not even doing anything creative, just sorting them out. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your advice towards the people that uh, are, are giving you those sessions? Oh, just take some time. Like, like take an extra hour or two after your session to clean things up before you send it off. That was your job for 10 years. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's what I would do. Like, before, if, like, after the end of a session and, I, you know, you give the client his MP3 or his wave file, whatever, but I wouldn't ever give them the session right away. Let me clean it up and get it... If you're working the way you should be working, none of this will be an issue at the end. Right. <laughs> like, right. And that's kind of one of my bonuses because I am a little bit more structured. Things always stay in a certain way. Use a template. Exactly. I have template to a degree and then make changes as necessary. What's the biggest thing you get? <clears throat> Unlabeled tracks? Unlabeled tracks. Everything's unorganized. Like hooks are here, there, wherever. Um, yeah. I personally do not like oxes and everything on the top of my session. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I almost freak out when I see that. I like everything yeah. on the bottom. Mm -hmm. the, one that, the one that misses with me the most is if I see it, I mix it. But yet they'll leave things in the session <laughs> that aren't supposed <laughs> to be made. used in the session. Exactly. And then, and then they have a little bit of an attitude when it doesn't sound like the rough. Right. And then when you, it's 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 uh, it's sad because it takes time from us being creative, you know, because your brain has trouble switching from creativity to to technical. It's quickly. almost one of those things you do the the two hours of cleaning up and getting everything organized, and then you go take an hour break, just yeah. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I don't even want to look at you again yeah. for a little while, and then yeah. come back at it, you know, with another fresh set of eyes. So the future, is it you learning post? Is it more live stuff? Is it, what? It, what is D Brown? What um, is, what's your vision? But yeah, getting into post is one of my side little quests that I'd like to do, but my, I think my overall main vision is, um, I was talking to Dave about it, is I'd like to open up a studio, but I want to, like a Motown of the future kind mm. of situation. Mm. I want to bring in artists and build them up and show them how it's done, you know, and so do all of artist it. development, have mm -hmm. but also services, label services, exactly. Like but be within the, the, you know, within the realms of the future. So think about the streaming and the, sure. the all of the, you know, the new stuff. So mm. that's yeah. cool. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Cool. Very but, cool. Yeah. Anything that comes my way, I'm, I'm excited. I, I feel like I'm still very fresh in this business. So mm. I, I'm keep I, that. Yeah. <laughs> Even no matter how long it gets. How long it gets, exactly. I, I actually had, in my early career, for whatever it's worth, had a guy from Fleetwood Mac tell me that. Right. Um, and he was a f second engineer who was working with the band. When the first engineer got fired, they said, give him a shot. Right. Gave him a shot. They gave him a point. Oh, Jesus. Just because they, at the time, they had a whole lot of budget. It turned out to be their biggest record ever. He made a bunch of money. But when I met him, which was at a Prince premiere, it's a weird story. The thing that I took away and I hung out with him for a while and that whole world um, is he never lost his enthusiasm. Yep. He never, he always said, you know, it's a privilege to be here and this, that, and the other. And it just kept him fresh for a long time, which is which is important to do. Really now, is. you're a soccer fan. Yes. Amongst other things, <laughs> which means you're an athlete. Are you, you got batter's box ready to go? Do I have to do it with my feet? Huh? Yeah. Can I use my you hands? You can lob me up. I'll shoot these things. <laughs> hey, well, no, if he does it with his feet, you're probably going to win. <laughs> <laughs> so, it could be deadly. Uh, here we go. All right. 808s. Rattle. DJ Quick. Tonight. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the, my mom's millet, my mom's soldier snuck me a CD, a, a, a tape with his song on there. That was the first time I ever heard DJ Quick in Germany. <laughs> uh, that's my boy. I love DJ Quick. Stereo Bus. 
Uh, API 2500. Loops. Loops. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't got one for loops. Take some points off, please. Yeah, yeah points off for loops. Ad libs. Ad libs. Panning. I like Pan Man. Uh, reverb. Lexicon 480. Inspiration. All of you guys, all engineers are my inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the wrong answer, but anyway. Uh, ba <laughs> bass. Bass. Uh, heavy. In the box. Mobile. What's the cheapest piece of gear you used on a well known record? The 57 on, <laughs> 57 on drums. That's true. I never thought about that. Yeah. Pretty sure I didn't win this one, Herb. No, you don't need to be pretty sure. You need to be certain. Because <laughs> so he's got bat speed, and the other thing he did is he covered up because he owned up to saying, I don't know. His next I, 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 I respected that. His next questions were very rapid. And yeah. Anyone, so and, 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 it's and a I, soccer player. Loop, loops was good, though. I'm like, I'm still over here thinking about that one. <laughs> <laughs> so we just, we just considered that a penalty kick. And, <laughs> and, and, and I whiffed my penalty. That's not good <laughs> that's either. Right. That's right. When going over the whole process, yeah. the, your inspiration answer was, was that alone made you win. You I know? appreciate that. You, do, you, do you find that it's important to give back when you have a chance to get in front of, of course. kids and other folks? Of course. Um, um, we've always tried to you know, obviously give back some, also be gender sensitive and make sure that we're, you know, helping young women and other folks, other, 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 whatever type of human being you are, have a chance to get through. We think that's important. Yeah. Um, well, look, it's fun to watch somebody who has always taken the approach of discipline and education and bring it to a genre mm -hmm. where you don't change who you are as a human. You actually utilize those skills to make your career go better. Exactly. Is that, is that a good description? I would say so. Um, we are happy that you uh, had heard of us before and deemed to <laughs> to be on the show. It's we, an we, honor to be here. <laughs> well, we never we never want to take that for granted um, because I think the minute you do that, you start to get sloppy. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So, congratulations, bro. No, thank you very much. Uh, I do appreciate it. We're going to do a lot we're gonna more do this together. Again. Yeah, we're going to do this right. Oh. I mean, okay, that's cool. what I'm talking about. All right, Dad, take us, <laughs> take us home. Wow, I was just sitting here thinking there's so many paths to success. Some are short, some are long. Some of them are you know, fraught with... Uh, with difficulties, your path was a military path. That's where it started, and and, and you gained so much from the military, which I think is, is we've seen that before on the show. Uh, Josh Goodwin's a good example of that. But as you start your journey, don't worry about the difficulties. Worry about how it's going to give you longevity, how it's going to give you an advantage over everyone else, and don't be don't be ashamed or or don't be scared to take more time. The more time, the better you're going to end up when you get there. We'll see you soon.